Assalamu alaikum everyone. I just want to say I hope all of you are having a really good day inshallah. Um, I'm good myself alhamdulillah and I also want to mention that I saw my last video had a lot of positive comments and a lot of you, a lot of you were really kind, extremely kind actually and welcoming to uh, welcoming me to Islam as well, alhamdulillah. Um, so thank you for that. Also I'm recovering from Covid but uh, I'm, uh, I tested uh, negative yesterday, so alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm good. It was just like a normal small cold or flu. Um, so yeah, so my voice might be a bit um, off during the video. So I was quite, <clears throat> I was quite astonished to see a lot of, uh, a lot of you did subscribe and a lot of you did comment and like. To me it was just really nice to see these comments because of course um, all this positive positivity you know on my video and it's just amazing so alhamdulillah thank you very much and yeah so for this video for today um, I did mention in the first video that I was going to talk a bit more about uh, what drove me to accept Islam or what drove me to investigate Islam let's say it like that I have like three of these that I got for free um, in the beginning before reverting to Islam. I signed up to a lot of uh, like beginners groups for Islam just to investigate a bit and um, a lot of them did send me this in the mail. So well, I only have three and I have other, uh, other translations as well which are somewhere in my bookshelf. And uh, I haven't opened these because I already have one. I'm already using one currently but so I always think this way that inshallah one day one of my family members or my close friends will um, think about Islam or revert or want to investigate Islam so inshallah this would be the book I'm gonna give them. So I always just keep them safe and I'm thinking like hopefully inshallah one day I would be able to give someone um, this uh, Quran translation. <clears throat> Please bear with me with my editing because I keep having to cut through um, specific parts that I don't want to use because I have a very short attention span so sometimes I'm just thinking about many things to say and then I just stay silent and I'm thinking which one should I say first. So yeah, so you're going to see a lot of cuts on this video. <clears throat> Another thing that I didn't really uh, put into my mind before um, making these videos is that you know, once I do upload a video and then more people start to click and then more people start to watch my video, it becomes recommended for a lot, of, a lot more people. So one thing that I'm just worried is I'm thinking before I'm speaking because I do not want to give out the wrong message or I do not want to um, accidentally say something that I'm not meant to that might be a bit offensive uh, for, you know, people who are also uh, reverting and, you know, everything is my story and of course uh, when I talk about my family, my family is different to your family so um, a lot of the time I might say some things and I might sound uh, like I'm bragging or I might sound like I'm uh, complaining which is not the case I'm trying to be as transparent as I can online um, without revealing too many things at the same time. So you know everything I say it is just to um, help someone out so that is my intention is to just upload videos to help whoever is out there who is going through the same situation as me. Inshallah I hope that I do help someone out there. So a lot of the things that um, I did in the beginning before reverting, so here I'm talking a bit about um, before reverting to Islam. So pretend that, you know, this is when I'm still figuring out what's, you know, what is the purpose of life in a way. Um, but I've always been a Christian or Jewish messianic. I had like mixed traditions um, in the household. So, you know, my mom was Christian, my dad was Jewish, uh, is Jewish messianic, my mom is, my mom is Christian. So that means that a lot of, um, of their traditions were implemented in, you know, what I did um, on the daily. We, my parents weren't really practicing, so they were in the beginning, but then gradually they just started to lose, um, like, their, they started to lose um, that closeness that you have um, in, as an individual you know towards um, God so 
they just uh, slowly stopped becoming strict maybe as well because I you know I was older so they weren't as strict but they were always strict um, <clears throat> so um, yeah my attention span yeah so a lot of the times I would um, my journey with the religions in general has always been uh, a very personal journey so I would also ask my parents like uh, mom why does this um, you know why is this happening in the bible and or I would get the Hebrew bible it was called the Hebrew bible so it had like um, you know Torah and Old Testament and New it had everything basically in there you know most of the time it was just me researching online <clears throat> And as I mentioned in my first video, I never had the thought of even going near Islam. I thought, you know, you have to be born into that. Um, I thought it was like a completely different religion that, you know, wouldn't interest me at all. Um, I didn't even know that they had uh, Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, and, uh, you know, all these prophets that were also in the Bible. Because of the names, they change a bit. I just assumed that they were completely different stories. <clears throat> so a lot of the times the research that I would do would be online on YouTube and I didn't even touch the Quran before in that time like it was literally just looking at street dawah and uh, training, uh, dawah training um, or like Christian versus uh, Muslim, these kind of videos you know and these things really um, intrigued me to just keep going but again, I never accepted Islam, like I was just thinking it was interesting and a lot of the points were, they were making was like, mm, good, but I was always in denial. Video. But there was many videos that, you know, made sense to me. I watched a lot of um, reverts talk about Islam because it helped me relate. Um, in that time, like hearing, uh, for example, hearing the Adam or hearing, you know, hearing the call to prayer, hearing um, uh, recitations it was pretty different and to me it was like obviously I didn't understand what was happening I don't know I didn't understand the point of recitation I didn't understand what they were saying you know I just had no idea I was very um, close-minded about the whole topic of Islam so I went on a telegram group telegram because I also speak French and Spanish so I was helping out new French um, beginner groups to sort of learn French as well and a lot of these girls they were 16 years old 15 year, year olds a lot of them were younger than me so they were also Muslim and they were much more knowledgeable with religion you know they were so um, you know for their age they were quite wise compared to me <clears throat> so a lot of them were having discussions between each other <clears throat> a lot of Muslim girls or I don't know I think there was also guys because the groups weren't separate everything was just mixed but a lot of these girls, um, I know that was mostly girls who would speak there, they would speak about certain topics um, and I would just read, I would never comment, I would just read along what they were saying, I was always always like hovering around the group and just you know looking around and like wondering what they're talking about and I was also like this for Korean um, group chats, uh, French group chats and Spanish group chats so and Romanian group chats so I love languages in general so I was always um, implementing uh, a lot of language learning in my life or trying to educate myself with uh, different cultures and all this. These girls they would uh, they would speak a lot about um, Islam uh, or mostly about like the morality and sunnah and I didn't know at that time what was happening but but not in a not in a like prideful way not in a way where they're arguing and you know trying to force Islam onto someone it was mostly like very humble just talking about certain actions weren't right and um, you know the, their point of view of depression and anxiety and stress and in, in a way it was helping me because I was going through all that so I would read these things and I was thinking like oh wow these girls are you know so young and they're just so uh, they have another mentality so I um, so all of these events were happening um, like so since I was let's say 14 so um, I always had small little encounters with Muslims and their actions and of course not all of them will be positive actions but again um, in general 
it's not just Muslims who can't behave as like many other religions in general humanity it's just they don't know how to behave sometimes a lot of the times I would have positive encounters with Muslims and I would just observe their actions I was never in in there like I would never talk to other people about the religion or Islam I would never speak to Muslims about their their religion so throughout my whole time it was always um, a very personal journey and I, I imagine that even now my friends and family they can't believe like they can't because I never gave any type of hint that I was curious about Islam or even searching it but I was also searching other religions as well so it's just that Islam was just something that was just constant there you know something that I never pushed away because I felt like that was the constant thing that was giving me answers but then I was in denial so throughout my life it's always been like this so looking at videos watching videos reading and I didn't even touch the Quran by the way in the, in that in those times so that's why I say it's it is really a personal journey like you cannot you know say to someone like in order to be Muslim you need to read the whole Quran because it may not work for them I feel like if you give someone the Quran and say read it all and then you'll find the truth like a lot of the times it would work subhanallah it does work um, for a lot of people but then a lot of them are closed-minded and they're just not willing to accept in their hearts yet so they need to go through something through a trial they need to go through um, their own research in order to feel like mm, they're convinced and that was me so I never touched the Quran before and then but I was looking of course at a lot of sources that were connected to the Quran I just didn't open the book itself but I was looking online <clears throat> and uh, a lot of them were videos uh, if I had like a question you know um, how to know um, that Islam is the correct religion and then you know they gave me sources like dun 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 this is how there's a chain I went to um, a school in Belgium so I also studied abroad a lot of them were Muslim or are Muslim um, when I lived in in Belgium so I did have a lot of Muslim friends there but then a lot of them weren't practicing so um, again I was 15 16 years old like I think it was just the teenagers the teenage lifestyle that mm, there was not many Muslims who were um, practicing and that was very common so at that time of course my in my ignorant child mind I was thinking okay like uh, that's is that what Islam is you know just so the Muslims be too free-minded or something again when you're a teenager it's not just Islam it's also many other religions and in general the teenage mind which makes you act in a certain way and you know you have impulses and temptations and all that so yeah that was just my mind thinking oh I'm living in a in Belgium and majority of people here are Muslim and they're just acting you know like crazy teens um, so that was my other encounter with uh, Muslims and apart from that that's all I had in my life um, towards um, Islam like I mean that's the only thing that's the only relation I had towards Muslim people so I never bothered to ask anyone about the religion I never told anyone that I was thinking about Islam or convinced about certain things it was all just a personal journey just researching on my own everyone has their own limitations within their struggles so of course for me I feel like my struggles is what pushed me um, towards um, towards what going on my knees and asking for guidance and I think that oh I know that subhanallah like bit by bit I was guided towards Islam but again it was not within a year like this was since I was like 12 years old I'd say and um, yeah so from the age of 12 years old um, I was already praying on my own and uh, I can't remember who told me this but I remember that since I was younger um, I'm pretty sure it was like a godmother that I had who, who just because I would always um, question my existence even at the age of 12 so I was quite young and um, I would always ask her like how do we know if um, if there's a god how do we know um, if this you know I had this kind of mind like you know if this world is just fake and you know we're just like little toys and I had these kind of thoughts and I would always ask her about that and uh, she she just told me like we don't know but it's just about faith and hoping and um, doing things correctly so she told me just to pray and ask for guidance ask for guidance um, just to 
think about the higher energy above, so God, and just ask for guidance so he can guide you to the correct path and all this. So that's one thing that stayed in my head always, ask for guidance, ask for guidance. So that's why I always had that. Um, it was a priority within all my prayers since I was the age of 12. I was always having that in my head, what she said. So I'd always just ask for guidance. Ask um, whoever's out there, you know, to guide me in the right way, even if I'm, um, you know, blind, but then just guide me so I can uh, get that help to find the correct path. <clears throat> One day, so this is the age of, so I took my shahad on 28th of June, 2021. Uh, so this was recent. And um, so when I was, let's say, when I was 20 years old, I, so I'm 23 now. So when I was 20 years old, I, um, oh, I, let me say 21 actually. So I was 21, I think, but there was quite a huge gap. So basically I just um, went on a website and I wrote my, my email and my number. No, I wrote my number and I wrote, it was this website that said Quran Institute. So it was just basically a website where it was it was uh, teachers helping out uh, uh, young students, young young. Uh, so they were like tutoring. So so I think that website was mostly for parents to find a tutor, a Quran, a Quran tutor for their kids. You know, uh, so a lot. Of, I just read the Quran Institute and then just wrote contact. It said contact us. So I just wrote my email and my and my number. And I explained briefly, like, oh, I'm curious about Islam, and I just want to know, and I have some questions, that's it. And I forgot about this website, actually, that I even wrote my name or my number. <clears throat> Around the time, I was going through a lot, and I remember specifically it was at 9am, so since I last put my phone number and signed up to this, I completely forgot about it, and then I received a call, like, months later, signing up to that. I received the call and it was this woman and she was just saying like yes hello you wanted uh, us to contact you this is the Quran Institute and I couldn't remember this but I was like mm, sounds right you know because I was researching a lot into Islam but at that point in my life I was sort of letting it go but still doing a little bit of research but not so um, obsessed like I was when I signed up to that uh, to that website so <clears throat> so I had forgotten um, I was studying as well so I had other uh, stressful um, uh, events happening in my life in, in that moment. I, um, yeah, so I received the call and the woman, uh, she had an accent. I was a bit intimidated because, again, this is completely new and I was thinking this is the first time I'm going to speak to someone about um, what I think about Islam, so how convinced I am and all this. So I was really nervous, I remember actually, in that time I was sleeping over a friend's house and it was at it was at 8am that I got out the house when I received this call um, and I was on the phone for like an hour with this tutor and I, I snuck out, you know, because it was early in the morning, my friend was still sleeping and so I snuck out the house of her house just to take this call because um, I, I, when she said that she was, you know, calling from Quran Institute, I was thinking I'm not going to be speaking about Islam while my friend's there. She might wake up and hear me. I was like nervous. So I was like, let me just get out and take the call outside. So I did <clears throat> take the call outside and and uh, the woman was, was speaking to me on the phone. She asked me um, if I know who's calling, um, if she, I remember the Quran Institute that I signed up my name. And she was asking if I if I'm the one who's taking the lessons or if I want lessons for my family member or something like this, like as if I have a child and I called contacted the tutor for my child or something. <clears throat> and she assumed that I was already Muslim. So um, so she asked me um, what, uh, you know, what uh, do you know this and this and that? And she, I don't know. She was. State, she was saying things that I was confused about as if you know I was a Muslim myself so I remember that I was like wait wait I don't know anything I put my name uh, I put my number there for you to contact me because I had a few questions and I'm not a Muslim and uh, she said okay well if you're not a Muslim what exactly do you want what would what are you looking for what do you want me to do for you and I said um, so I'm not a Muslim and I just had a few questions and she stopped me right there and she said Look, I, I am not uh, qualified enough to convince you about Islam, that is not my job. 
um because i might say the wrong things I told her like oh okay i understand and uh it felt like she was getting a bit frustrated because i didn't know myself what i wanted from her but she was also trying to figure out what she what what i wanted from her so she was asking me so so if you're not muslim are you convinced at least about islam or is this you trying to uh you know compare christianity and other religions with islam because you know she doesn't have time for that it was just a call to basically <clears throat> set up a date for a lesson or something so i eventually told her no 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 i will I've, I've been doing my own research um and i felt really nervous to say this but i actually told her i am convinced about islam that was my first time ever saying it out loud and i remember that saying that shocked me myself like i remember that uh, so when i get nervous or shy i go red so i go um bright red and i remember that when I said these words, I went red because I was thinking like, uh, like I was so nervous, I was so not embarrassed. Yeah, I, I guess exposing myself and realizing how much I've been keeping inside about Islam and finally saying it, it was like such a uh, like feelings, you know. I remember when I told uh, the woman like, no, I do. I have been. I'm convinced about Islam, um, but I, I'm not born Muslim. I'm not Muslim, so I just want to know if it. And then, so she's like, what do you mean you're not born Muslim? You do know that um, Islam is accepting of anyone. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? Uh, so um, she told me, so just answer my questions. Uh, do you believe in one God? And I said, yes. Uh, do you believe in the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? And I said, uh, yes. And do you believe that the correct religion is Islam? And I said, yes i have been doing research but i want you to answer some of my questions i just want to learn more she's like okay so you are convinced about islam so have you taken your shahada and i said no i haven't i don't know what that is and she's like oh no 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 <laughs> like this is beautiful at the same time she feels sorry for me because she still knows that my mind is so small towards islam but then at the same time i'm convinced and now i'm looking back at myself and i'm thinking like wow i was really just not knowing anything really and i find it cute actually because i was really desperately trying to like find help and i didn't even know what to do when help arrived and i was just so confused and thinking you had to be born muslim never heard about shahada so i was literally just calling because um I've always been the type, so I've always had like, I love philosophy and I love like knowing and being curious and all this. So for me, when I can't, when I received her call, I was thinking, okay, we're going to have a good conversation about Islam and I'm going to be convinced. And then for the rest of my life, I'm going to read the Quran and, you know, follow um, uh, like the Muslim ways. But, you know, I, w I was accepting that maybe I'll never be Muslim, but I'll just live my life as a Muslim, you know, without being a Muslim because I thought they had to be born Muslim. So that was my mind, that was my mentality then, and this, she was so humble, so she was so... It felt like she wasn't frustrated anymore because she understood that, okay, this is someone who's accepting Islam and she doesn't know what to do, you know, she's like a little baby, what should I do with her? So this is, you know, me and her were so close now, alhamdulillah, like it, it was meant to be. Um, and yeah, so she's always telling me, she was so confused, she didn't know what to do with me, it was like a precious little baby and she just didn't know how to not scare me away, you know, and uh, I remember I took my shahada on the streets at 9am and after that I, you know, it, again, taking the shahada is not just going to, you know, hit you in the face with a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, perfect, uh, shiny, glittery, uh, you know, it, I don't know what people think, but of course when you take the shahada it's emotional it's um in fact i was numb but it was like a good type of numb it was like i was starting from zero and i just didn't know what to do now so as soon as i took my shahada it was i was like what now and then i realized wow like now that i'm a new muslim now that i took my shahada now comes the real deal like now i need to start studying and you know now it's my um it's my responsibility to 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 research about what am i following exactly what should i be doing as a muslim and <clears throat> how um yeah so just research more about what i'm following and um, how to set a good example as a muslim and 
so yeah step by step then I spoke to this tutor and bit by bit you know I started my lessons with her so she was teaching me everything the pillars of uh, Islam pillars of faith and and bit by bit like you know like I was in kindergarten still learning about my ABCDs so um, she was very amazing amazing tutor I still have lessons with her actually and um, yeah so she it, it was as if she's done this before but she hasn't so she, she said that she was so nervous to take me as a student because she didn't want to teach me in the wrong way but she said uh, that everything alhamdulillah worked out so yeah <clears throat> I uh, eventually um, had very funny moments as well where uh, so I was beginning to pray and she, obviously because of the pandemic um, as well and she was in Egypt so she's an Egyptian tutor and uh, she always told me to record myself and I'm praying just to make sure that I'm doing everything properly and a lot of the times because when I'm praying and so getting from prostration to <clears throat> to standing up I sometimes I was like I was not used to it so a lot of the time I would tilt and I would fall and then I would laugh at myself and then I had to begin again because I laughed um, and then I was distracted so I restarted so to me seeing all this journey subhanallah it was just beautiful because you know there was it was struggles but then it was beautiful and then I was learning new things and it was like I was you know the fun of learning and it's it felt like kindergarten again you know like learning every little detail I was curious I was having fun learning it I was like wow mind opening I was learning so much about Islam and um, you know uh, it was all um, it is still you know now um, alhamdulillah like I'm still learning bit by bit each day and the journey is just as beautiful and even if there's gonna be you know trials along the way I have learned and I've been taught and I have the knowledge now to say um, that you know that I have my faith in in God so it's not it's not like before where I was like a little child and I was constantly stressed and depressed and you know worrying about the future worrying too much about stressing about what happened before and so my whole life changed and I have never experienced such drastic change in such a small period of time and that's just because that's that's how you can see that when you're devoted to something when you when you really want something you're just willing to change and willing to learn quickly um, and willing to research and to jump into this and you know again I was a very shy person I still am a very shy person actually um, even recording this at the beginning it took a while for me to record this the purpose of recording is to help other people so um, yes yeah, so alhamdulillah I I feel like that gives me energy to be able to turn on the camera and record and then that's it so um, yes yeah, so a lot of the times uh, my tutor would uh, ask me uh, you know how is how is it how are you praying how are you doing this record how you do wudu and um, a lot of the times uh, I was doing it correctly but then you know there was like some things that she wanted me to do differently and you know everything that she corrected me every re uh, source or resource that she gave me towards every action I should do and um, you know I wasn't just she wasn't just telling me go wash your hands you know for no reason like you know there was there was um, a purpose for everything I, I did so everything I learned everything she was um, telling me to do she always had sources behind it um, from the Quran, from the Hadith, so she was always teaching me in such a specific way. And I think, and I believe, that this tutor and me have such a connection that was, of course, it was fate. Subhanallah, like it was fate. So we connected so well. Professional, the way she's teaching as well. She has experience, um, not with new beginners, but you know, Subhanallah, she was able to take um, to take me as one of her students, and she did a very good job. <clears throat> so yeah i um and eventually i know that i'm not gonna have this tutor for the rest of my life like mm -hmm. i know that eventually i'll have to take um take on and learn myself and you know you know become my own tutor and then become tutor to my children inshallah so this is why at this moment um i feel so grateful that i'm able to have this opportunity to 
to learn from a teacher like this. And we're always learning things. She's learning things while she's teaching me. She's also researching for me and for herself. So it's just a beautiful connection. For me. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is why as well it's very important to find the people who will drive you to be better. So a lot of um, me before, a lot of the mistakes I did do is not even bother to find someone who would um, make me want to do better in life. It was mostly, I was mostly isolated and then just being friends at university or school with, you know, whoever came up to me or whoever wanted to speak. And I wasn't really bothering to find a connection. And I realize now that now that I'm Muslim, I'm constantly trying to look for someone going to the masjid, trying to find a um some you know muslims to just talk about my journey and then they're asking me and then they're like you know there's so there's the community that's so welcoming as well at the masjid and a lot of them are calling me auntie a lot of them make me call them auntie and then they're hugging me and then after the prayers they're giving me dates and you know they're hugging me and they're just so welcoming so um yeah i uh I mean, honestly i i've had such good experiences so far alhamdulillah and inshallah i'll keep on having beautiful memories with uh, with my journey <clears throat> and uh yes so um so yeah that's my journey so this is already a 30 minute video so i'm not sure if i should also talk about what my parents and how they reacted towards this so i think i would leave that for next time because i did talk a lot already um yeah so i don't know if i if i missed out anything but if i do remember anything else towards my journey and why i reverted um or how i reverted and all this then of course i will add them to the previous um i mean to the next videos that i make inshallah and hopefully um with everything i say uh everyone will take it in a positive way in case i have said something that has um that has made someone think otherwise then i do apologize but uh yeah so this is just me talking about what i went through everyone's story is different and um you know a lot of people do have amazing families amazing support um they have many Muslim friends who have tried to convince them and then eventually they gave in to research about Islam themselves or that there's other people who unfortunately are going through such a tough time even you know getting hold of the Quran because their family are not accepting at all I would consider myself alhamdulillah very um, fortunate to have parents who despite not being supportive they they are showing their way of um, tolerating it I guess um, Yes, so I say if anyone out there is actually struggling through a lot and, um, you know, either if they're not allowed or they're being restricted by the things um, they can do to research towards Islam, you just need to have faith and realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you're going through and everything that is happening is for a purpose um, either if it's you know to teach you a lesson to teach the other people around you a lesson but just to hold on then just don't lose faith that's it and always pray and pray and pray um i actually I'd, I'd say that i did make a lot of changes in in my life um and uh, a lot of people can't do that like, and you know that's because they're scared of what their family members would say their friends would say but for me i think i the reason i was able to do that's because i know my family and despite them being um, strict i know that they would not impose or they would not go to far measures to um, restrict me from something that i believe in uh, when I put on the hijab, I didn't tell my parents I'm gonna wear the hijab. I went, I traveled three hours away to outside of London. I uh, went to this little town and it's it, it was like uh, at, at the beach and I got like a hotel for two days and I wore my hijab outside. Um, that was one way that I wanted to feel, you know, like I wanted to embrace Islam myself and my way and show my devotion, you know, it's wearing the hijab it's it's a struggle but it's an entirely new step um 
and devotion towards um, God. So it's like a promise between me and God that I'm wearing this and um, symbolizes my faith and all this. So, so this is why I traveled three hours away <laughs> to wear the hijab and then I posted it on Instagram because I was too embarrassed or let me not say embarrassed but I was scared yeah I was scared to what my parents would say and my family would say so I didn't want to confront my parents and wear the hijab and be like hi here is me with the hijab so I just posted a picture and I wrote a few things about my faith and eventually people started like wow mashallah like a lot of um, like university as well students um contacted me saying like i didn't know that you were you know thinking to uh, revert and and um my mom never commented about it until i came back from that trip and you know of course it wasn't all positive but it was neither horrific alhamdulillah so you know, I, I, uh, some people find it better to confront um, their parents about it. Others do what I did, which is just chicken out and go three hours away to post it on social media because they can't tell them face to face. So that's what I did and <laughs> I chickened out. But mm. So yeah, <clears throat> I will talk about my parents' reactions in the next video, inshallah. And yeah, hopefully this video again um is beneficial for anyone who is thinking to revert so that this video can motivate um anyone who's watching it uh watching this video i hope it would motivate you to even um look or research into islam and if you're scared to confront your parents about it you know there will be a few there would be if it would be a struggle to go through to tell your family about your faith but if it feel if you feel like you'll be able to um open up more and be able to pray um because for me for example i had to tell my parents that i'm muslim because i kept having to disappear five times a day to pray in my room and i would close my door and i didn't want them to walk in me praying so a lot of the times when i'd be praying they would knock on my door like hello 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 trying to come in and i wouldn't answer so you know, all of a sudden I finish my prayer and I walk out, they'd probably think, like, what are you doing? So for me, it felt, like, much better if I would just say, like, to be honest, I'm Muslim. <laughs> and um, in that way, they know that why I'm disappearing five times a day. And um, so, yeah, I, I found it better. But a lot of the times people don't, um, ha are not fortunate enough to have that privilege to be able to speak or open up to their parents about uh, religion. So um, I really hope that um, inshallah everything will get easier for you and uh, for me as well and uh, inshallah that this um, video is beneficial for anyone who is even watching it or even considering Islam. Um, again thank you for the people who have commented in my previous video who were very very kind, too kind actually, um, welcoming me. I really do appreciate it for every and each and every comment uh, I did read. Obviously it means a lot to me just reading these comments and uh, I didn't expect, honestly I thought I would just get like a few views and hopefully help someone out but I didn't expect that someone that even Muslims will you know be watching a revert story because I thought I don't know how that comes up on your uh, on your feed, I think YouTube feed because you are a Muslim but you know um, yeah it's meant to be so um thank you for watching my video and yes i hope everyone has a beautiful weekend a beautiful week or you know if you're studying or working for my next video i'm thinking to maybe talk about what my parents how i spoke to them their reactions and all that so yes again i have loads of things that i probably didn't mention because i forgot about it so i would always include or add on to um, my next videos inshallah so yeah so thank you for watching again and assalamu alaikum